Hey, welcome to this series in React and TypeScript. I'm going to show you a few tricks on how you can use TypeScript with React, and it's going to be pretty fun. I'm going to publish a video each day this week. So it's going to be short videos and down to earth and all this stuff that all my videos always are. So hopefully you're going to learn something in this and um, nothing more to say really. As always, just let's get started. All right, we're going to set up React with TypeScript, and I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. I'm going to use Create React App and Vite. I'm not going to do it from scratch because that requires a lot of stuff. So I may do a separate video on this, but I haven't decided yet. I think we'll be good with Create React App or Vite. I'm going to use Vite for this uh, series. So uh, do whatever you want. Use Create React App or Vite. It doesn't matter really. Vite is a fantastic tool that I started to use now instead of Create React App because it's faster. But let's start with Create React App. So we can look here at their documentation. They have a section called Adding TypeScript, and we can do that by MPX Create React App. We have the name of our application, and then we use dash dash template and TypeScript, and this will install React with TypeScript. So I go inside of my terminal, MPX Create dash React dash App, and we have a name, um, CRA React dash TS dash dash template TypeScript. And this will set everything up for us. So I press enter and wait for it. All right, it's set up uh, correctly here, I think. Uh, they have some warnings here now and some high. I, I hope they will fix that uh, soon. I've seen that recently. But it should work now so we can type in npm start to see if our application, no. Of course, I have to navigate inside of the folder also. I always do this mistake. CD, CRA, React, dash TS. Uh, then I type npm start. And I'm going to open up localhost 3000. And there we have our application. So it's working. And the great thing about this great React app is that we have everything installed with ESLint and Prettier and stuff like that. So for example, rules of hooks are installed, so we have everything that we need regarding linting for React. Now I'm going to break this one and I'm going to navigate up a level and clear my console. And I'm going to use Vite instead. And if we take a look here at Vite, how to install this one, we type in npm init at vite.js forward slash app. So that's what we're going to do. npm init at vite.js for slash app. So it's going to ask you a few questions here. We have a product name and uh, and uh, we're going to call it vite react dash ts. And then it asks what we want here. So we can have anything from vanilla, view, react, preact, lit, element, and svelte. In this case, we're going to use react and then we're going to have react ts. And now it tells us to navigate inside of the folder. Really good for me, because otherwise I would obviously forget it. CD Vite React dash TS. And then we run npm install. And you can see that it installs very quickly. It's a quite light bundle, this. So that's pretty neat. Clear the console. And I type in npm run dev. There's no npm start here. So npm run dev will start up the dev environment. And it's at the same port, so localhost 3000, we reload it. And here we have it with the Vite instead. So the only downside here is that we don't have anything regarding ESLint or rules of React hooks and stuff installed for us. And Vite tell us, tells us that we can use templates also if we want, because they have a lot of templates finished for us. So they have this uh, community maintained templates. So if we go to this vite.js forward slash awesome dash vite and then we have templates. So here you can see they have a lot of templates for vite. Instead of us setting it up from scratch and installing everything ourselves, we can use something here for React and I think I'm going to use this one. Vite React TS ESLint Predator. So I click on that one and it will take me to this repository. So it's the sword breaker. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Then I'm going to copy this URL here. We have the username forward slash and the repo name. 
So I copy this one, I go back to my console, break this one, navigate up a level. So I'm going to show you how to use this template now instead, so you don't have to set up everything yourself with, um, uh, with the ESLint and stuff. And we're going to use a tool that's called Digit or Dedit. I don't know how to pronounce it. And this essentially takes a repo and download it to your computer, but you won't have any Git history and stuff. So it's a better way of doing it if you don't need to use the history. And you can see here also that they tell you how to do it with the Git or Digit. So MPX, Digit, and User Project. And this one is using main instead of master. So we should add that one with a hash sign at the end of the project. And then we have the product name. So that's what I'm going to do here. So of course I have to type in mpx, the git. Then we have the product, no, the repo name. And I'm going to add in a hash sign and main because it's using the main branch. Uh, and then we have a name. <clears throat> and that's always something that's uh, hard to come up with. Vit, uh, ESLint, TS, React, something like that. You can call it whatever you want. And now you can see that it cloned the repo, but we don't have the Git history. So CD, Vit, ESLint, TS, React. And I type in npm install. We have to install all the dependencies. And this one actually don't have the rules of hooks installed. And it's saved as a dev dependency. So I'm going to copy this one here. And go to my terminal, paste it in. So I'm npm install ESLint plugin React hooks, and I save it as a dev dependency. And then we also need to add it to our ESLint config. So this one is going to go in the extents. So I copy this one here, open up my code ed editor, and we have the prettier config. No, we should have the ESLint config, of course. And it's here, extends, so I paste it in somewhere here maybe, and save it. And that will enable rules of hooks for React also. Then we can type in npm run dev to see if it works. And we go to localhost, and here you have it, vite, react, typescript, eslint, and prettier and it's up and running and it's working. So these are two ways you can set up React with the TypeScript. And um, I'm gonna use Vite. So this is essentially the setup I'm gonna use for the other videos in this series. So see you in the next one.